Big shout out to today's video sponsor, Linsol. Check out their fantastic deals in the links in the video description. When Final Audio came to me and offered their pair of gaming IEMs, I was both intrigued and skeptical. Razer's Moray looks to be pretty poor, and so can Final Audio actually create an IEM that's better for gaming than anything else? Find out in my review of the Final Audio VR3000. Hey guys, I'm Ryan Thomas, and Final Audio sent out the VR3000, but have not seen this video before, you didn't ask me to put anything nice in the video, and haven't paid me a penny, so, you know, think about that going forward. Right, let's get the basics out of the way. This is a £70 pair with a dynamic driver and an inline microphone. It's not overly complicated from a hardware perspective, and speaking of which, let's have a look at what you get in the box. Okay, so you get five pairs of tips, which I think is fairly decent, and you get a little pouch, which is appreciated, although at £70 maybe that could have been a case, because the rest of the unboxing experience it felt like walking into Poundland or a dollar store, I guess, if you're in the US, and picking up a set of earphones. It's cheap plastic, it looks and feels awful, and yeah, one of the worst IM unboxing experiences. I've had better experiences opening up Poundland or dollar store earphones. So, you know, this doesn't affect the overall product quality, of course, but it's kind of sad that the first thing you see, the first impression you get, is of a very cheap unboxing experience. Right, let's give the IEMs themselves a fair check. So notice how I didn't talk about the cable to start with, and that's mainly because the cable is fixed. This is rather annoying. I wish it was detachable. There are IEMs that I've reviewed recently that you might see or will see the video or have seen the video that cost less than £20 that have a detachable two-pin cable, and the cable is pretty good. So the fact that this is a fixed cable is annoying. Uh, the ear hooks are separate, which is quite nice, I suppose, because some people don't like the ear hooks, some people do. These are designed to be games with and for use with VR, so having the ear hooks might help with sort of placement of the straps for the VR headset that you might be using. So I guess that's appreciated in some way. But the cable quality is just so cheap and nasty and horrible. I was shocked when I first got these out of the packaging. I have not felt a wire this bad I think ever, or if I have, maybe the like, you know, one pound or one dollar earphones that you might get with like a little radio when you're a kid or something. Am I really showing my age there? A little radio when you're a kid. Um, but yeah, I, this cable is awful. <laughs> it's very lightweight, it's very flexible, so it has that going for it. And there's a good amount of length on it as well. So, you know, you don't feel like you're being tugged away from the, the, uh, listening source at any point and with VR headsets because of course they have the source on the headset because it's such a thin wire it's easy to sort of cable manage and everything so it's not the worst thing in the world from that perspective but if you're not using a VR headset it just feels nasty and I would have given them a pass on this if it was detachable because then I could put my cable on it which you know might not have a microphone but it would feel better and yeah I'd fit better I just really dislike this cable. Uh, it has an inline mic with some buttons on it, which is useful, I suppose, and has a four pole, three and a half mil single ended connector on the end, four pole because it has a microphone built into it, which I will put a sound test for later on in the video. Only joking, it's right now. This is what the microphone sounds like on the VR3000. The IMs themselves are very lightweight, which is really good for sort of a VR experience where you, you want to keep as little weight off of your head as possible. The VR headset usually is quite heavy. Uh, and yeah, the shell is quite distinct. It, is, it has some nice angles to it. It actually looks quite minimal and clean and nice. I, I like the way it looks. It's a plastic housing. Uh, the nozzle size is about average, so you know it should fit most people's ears. However, because of the nice angles, uh, this is one of the few IMs in recent years I've used that have created like a soreness in my ear after sort of an hour, hour and a half of usage. I can usually get five to six hours out of an IEM before they start hurting my ear. So an hour to an hour and a half isn't great, uh, especially as I tend to play CSGO. Those games tend to last longer. So you play multiple games, suddenly you've got soreness in your ears. Didn't seem to go away after sort of a few hours of usage. It, I just found that I could tolerate the pain for a little bit longer than usual. So say two hours at one point or two and a half hours instead of the one 
to one and a half hours that I had to start with. I promise, don't click off the video because there is a redeeming quality to this. And it's not overall sound quality. <laughs> I wish it was. Um, there is one particular thing that actually do make these my gaming IEMs going forward, despite all of the drawbacks. So they are actually, they do actually have a redeeming quality. The overall sound quality could be seen as a little bit muddy. There's plenty of impactful bass, which is really nice for sort of um, FPS games, explosions, battlefield felt very, very immersive with these. The treble is maybe a little bit pulled back because it's not necessarily a hi-fi music listening IM. It's designed for gaming. So I would say overall quality is okay. There are better sets below the £70 price point, but the thing that keeps these as my gaming IEM is the sound stage. You're probably expecting this, uh, but the sound stage is just ridiculous for an IEM. They sound wide, they sound deep, the imaging is accurate. Uh, playing games is so immersive with these, it's almost like wearing, not quite, but it's almost like wearing a, a big open back pair of headphones on your head, except it's an IEM. It's, these blow the OH-10s out of the water, which I said previously had fantastic uh, sound stage and imaging, which they do. These just sound that much better in terms of that space, that, yeah, these sound incredible. Playing CSGO, playing Valorant, Apex, a bit of Overwatch, Battlefield, there's just an immersion level, there's a, an accuracy level there that no other IEM I've ever heard uh, can replicate. They're definitely an acquired taste. Is You need to be using them for those kinds of FPS games maybe, or listening to live music where you are just hearing pure soundstage. Like I said, there's not enough resolution or quality or smoothness or any of those niceties that you might get from a good hi-fi music IEM. You don't really get any of that here. You just get impactful bass, decent mid-range, really insane soundstage. And that puts these a, a very unique, interesting place in my recommendations list. I, I recommend them. I know I said they're in my recommendations list. I recommend them for those who maybe have a bit of money to have multiple IEMs and want one that is specifically really good for like Valorant, CSGO, Overwatch, Apex, competitive FPS games, but don't care about the fact that they are pretty meh. I wouldn't say they're awful, but they're pretty meh in every other category and they might hurt your ears. Everyone's ear shape is different. So you could have an ear shape that really caters to the sharp angles of these things. Nothing is, is particularly sharp. It's just the angles of them dig in. So it's not like a, the corner of a box that's getting like stuck in your ear. It doesn't feel like a stabbing pain. It's just an achy pain where the shape of them is sort of sat maybe in a, in a slightly uncomfortable position for a long period of time and then you end up with a bit of soreness. So they get my recommendation, but final audio, the cable is woeful. <laughs> the the shape needs a little bit of, of changing to the, the shell. The unboxing experience is just, I mean, I'm mesmerized by just how bad it was. But you have absolutely aced what I think should be a gaming IEM. I don't think a gaming IEM should be amazing for music and all the and movies and all these other things. I think what you've made here is pretty much the perfect sort of FPS gaming IEM. So, yeah, do a better job next time on the next iteration because of the physical attributes of these. But from a Sonic standpoint, they are terrific. So that's my review of the Final Audio VR3000. An interesting IEM for sure, but one that I think you should probably all have a look at if you're serious about gaming. Thanks to Final Audio for sending these out for me to review. Uh, please check out all my links in the video description. Uh, thanks to you all for watching and to my patrons for being continually supportive. I've been Ryan Thomas, and I'll catch you later. Cheers.